I forgot I went live. Like, totally forgot. 100% I forgot I went live. I'm over here debating the use of the ellipsy. Ellipses? Ellipsy? Ellipses. In conversation. In just 16 minutes, huh? It is relative, yeah. Uh. Yeah, we are live. I didn't I didn't know either. It's okay. I'm trying to push for hundred percent bottom. A lacquer. Like Arnold, but not. Thanks for the tier three, the hundred and one months and uh you know, being you. Chat, I was talking to Dreams in the game chat and not realizing I was live, but so my mother for like is since text messaging has existed, whenever you'd ask her something, she'd answer yes. Like, specifically when you'd ask her a request. So I guess we made plans that she'd watch Alice. Today I said, can you be here by 3.30 was my text message. Question mark. Her response was yes, dot, dot, dot. And she's always done this to me, and I've always just thought that she was kind of a, a mean woman. It's specifically on requests. Where I, at least that's where I notice it the most. Maybe she does it all the time. I scroll through our text log, but specifically on requests, I always notice it's yes or no, dot, dot, dot. Which, as far as I understood, the dot, dot, dot either means you're going to add more context, you need more context, or, you, you know, like you're taking a long pause in a conversation to think. Or a pause because you're upset with the situation. Turns out, back in her day, it meant something completely different. I always thought she just didn't really want to do shit for me, but she was going to do it anyway. So every time I asked her to do something, there was this layer of guilt that was applied by the dot, dot, dot. As in like, really? Yeah. Or like, yeah. Because if I was going to be like, hey, dreams, I'm going to fuck you, dot, dot, dot. You'd wonder where or if I really was or how. So yeah, it's been like, I don't know, however long texting exists. 12 years of guilt. I mean, deep sea and fly fishing have been in the works for like ever. Fly fishing has been in the works since like the beginning of time. I don't know that they had confirmed deep sea, but, but I know that they had been, been has been talked about. I mean that. Um, 
it's kind of the inevitable, I think, with a fishing game, isn't it? For both. Um, she says it comes from when she used to write actual letters. And it meant that there was like, uh, like she was, her thought was running on. Yeah, I mean, but the devs for fucking Star Citizen confirmed they're going to make a video game someday. That's my point. Is it, I know that fly fishing has been in the works for ever. And I understand why. Because it's incredible. To get fly fishing down from a mechanical standpoint is going to be very challenging. Every game that's done it so far, it's a struggle. I don't... It, it, because that's what I said, dreams. Because like, yes, when the, how can your thought there be like your thought be running on when the only when you gave me the direct answer, which is yes or no. There's no what more to the thought is there. It's either yes, no, or yes, but. But just adding this. She said she's going to change to NP, which I was a little upset about, honestly. It's guilt. I think it was intentional guilt, and now she's denying it. I don't think that'll ever happen, do you? Ever. Because it's just not a thing, really. Besides inland lakes, that's like not a thing. Game is half inland lakes. Uh, yeah, but oh, they'll never add it to old lakes. Never, no, nope, no way. They can't do it. It can't be done. And I don't like if you play the game. I don't see how they like how you would expect them to add it. Like it would destroy sturgeon. Sturgeon fishing would be a joke. Yeah, my mosquito just trying to level my bottom fishing. Uh, to add it to a new boat like we were talking about with Archie, maybe. Nah, if you did on Amber, same deal. The, 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 uh, you could go to Amber at level fucking 15. Yeah, sturgeon would be a joke. Bait fishing is very common in deep sea. Not underweight, not on the bottom. You would be hanging it over the side of the boat. You wouldn't be throwing out a bottom rig. You can't. The, 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 like, the, uh, there's only like a couple of fish where you're even bottom bouncing deep sea, hence the term deep. Because deep sea fishing is <laughs> More line than we have on a half our rods. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but half our line to the bottom. It's a com completely different rig, though, Juju.
But yeah, I I don't think they could ever add it to bottom bottom rods to the current lakes. It would it would destroy the meta of the game. Yeah. It's it's uh vertical fishing screens. giant conventional reels which i think has been the big issue with adding massive stuff is it changes the complete state of the game as it stands it's a big undertaking it, i mean the the end game goal is chasing these giant fish right that all pretty much require you to be on shore with a bottom rod and fight them. If you put us in a boat, I mean, that's why people go chasing sturgeon with lures already, even though the bite rate is super low and the odds of catching one is super low, the advantage of a boat is GG. And because you can set the boat still hardcore. Yeah, you just anchor up, and you're not dealing with 12-foot uh, rolling waves or bigger when you're <laughs> at sea, right? Because you could, like these rigs that we're currently using in a tight line fashion don't work. As soon as you went over, rolled over the first wave, your shit would be disrupted from the bottom and. You'd probably just end up with a fuck ton of tangled lines, even. Exactly, Wani. I think it's it's a big meta part of the game. We've talked about it since Archie. I, I thought the only way that they'd do bottom rods in Archie is if they had a special rod holder for that lake. But I don't think it'll ever be added to the rest of the game. Because it, it, they would have already done it. It's not like it's a complicated thing to do. They have the technology. I did expect it on Archie, though. When I saw it, I thought maybe we were going to get some different rod holders. Yeah, which is the same thing as I've already, if they, if they had something like that. Exactly, Dream. It did, um, for better or worse. But I don't think it went the other way. I think they they would definitely make things harder on other maps, not easier. Not simplify things. Or they'd have to change fish behavior with running. make fish more willing to run to the boat. I think it just even if you even if it's even if carp fishing isn't actually harder, it's it's certainly harder on the player because the options are so great. I mean, it was already a debate about which dough to use, and now there's 7,000 boilie combinations. Probably more than that. Like, genuinely, there's thousands of combinations. 
Is it still nighttime if one has not slept? Yep. Like, and that's a real fisherman issue. The more variety and options and methods to fish, the more struggle you have. It's just... I think fly fishing is a really interest, a really easy add to the game without disrupting because I think they do it just like they do telescopic it's its own thing it's some extra thing you buy do right like it's, it's got to be it's the only way I think it makes sense I, I think everything I know about fly fishing they don't make giant fly fishing gear so it'll be similar to ultralight and similar to tele stick it'll be a special category with its own records and you do it for fun It may be more effective on certain species or whatever at times, but um, it'll never be, you'll never have the, the strength that you do with your other techniques. I mean, we don't even really have a good way currently, or actually any way, to currently fish vertically. So that'll be interesting to see Deep Sea added, because I, I don't know how they will do it without adding a vertical option. It doesn't seem that difficult to let us let drop our line with stationary reel. Japan does some weird saltwater fly fishing. They can get pretty large. Larger than we see in the U.S. So it's really jungle. Interesting. I think they're going to get... <laughs> they're going to get in... They're already in a place, I think, where they have too many techniques for the state of the economy so if they if they really add two more that's a lot that's a long time of of farming silver like i've already just said i'm never buying a jerk bait rod I'm already said I'm probably never buying a bait fish match rod. It's a giant. All right, it wasn't that big. So as exciting as new techniques are, I think they really need to maybe take a... I guess for the long-term players, for the, the 100 people they have that are level 50, it's fine, but... I 
I mean skill points. Two more techniques with skill points. It'll be it would be some big rebalancing. So maybe they do maybe they do add boat rod rod holders and change the make a significant change in the game. I don't know. Or they just say fuck you, get eleven million experience a level that's gonna turn into twenty five, sixty, seventy million experience a level. What are you catching out there, Hardcore? I can't see chat because it's just records. Asp on what? Trolling, oh, trolling, Sora, weird. It's been a long time since I've ever heard anyone say that one. point seven percent it's only gone up once oh yeah I'm nowhere near enough energy why am I clicking Damn it, Chad, I have a stupid appointment to get my driver's license renewed today. It's all your fault. I was just going to live my life without a driver's license. to turn there must be a way to turn turn it off No, I need a new picture. Yeah, I was supposed to do it on my birthday in 2020. I hope they yell at me, make me take a new driver's test or something funny. 
I don't know what the rules are on that. How long can your license be expired before you get... I don't think there is a total weight caught okay, no, just a total fish. 31,000 fish. Wish I could see those stats in real life. Got second in our tournament yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money, money. Not like a lot. It's the end of the year, so the boat counts way down. Uh oh. My morning poop is here. I'll be right back.
So yeah, yesterday's tournament was uh, really annoying. We started out very slow. The goal of the tournament is the five biggest fish you can come up with, but they have to be at least 14 inches long. So we started out super slow and we only had two in the boat. It was a six hour tournament. And in the last two hours, we caught, I don't know exactly, but somewhere between 15 and 25, 14 to 15 inch fish. Which meant weighing them all and trying to keep them organized and they were biting in schools, so at times we had like nine fish in our boat and I'm sitting back there on the floor with fish all over trying to weigh them and compare them and figure out which one's which. Very annoying. Normally when you're bass fishing there's a big variety in weight and size so it's a lot easier to organize your fish and know which are big and which are small but when they're all within an inch of each other and every ounce matters. It was uh, the most tedious thing I've had to deal with. And I probably fucked up and threw back at least one or two that weighed an ounce or a half an ounce more. You have to, you can only bring five fish in. That's the rules. You are not allowed to bring in any more than five. So if you don't weigh them ahead of time you're just guessing which are bigger which again normally pretty easy to hold two fish up and go this one's bigger but uh, when they're all within an inch of each other no no uh, you can bring a scale. Most of us use a balance beam to just compare two fish. But we were catching them so fast that the balance beam is kind of ineffective. Yeah, we just hang a bar and hang a fish off each side and, you know, whichever one's heavier. Now, like, they even sell a tournament scale that tracks... You can save eight fish weights in it, which normally we don't need it because we don't catch that many fish in a row. <laughs> like professionals, they weigh them immediately and throw them out. Uh, some of the tournaments still bring in five, I guess. But they absolutely still weigh their own and balance their own. That's probably just not on camera. Because it's not the most exciting thing in the world. Actually, it can be. When you're fucking holding six fish at once trying to determine which one's which. But we were one of only two boats yesterday to catch five fish. So that was nice. And it made all that work we did absolutely worthless. Um, in the first place beat us by like two pounds. They went, it was a chain of five lakes. And they went all the way to the other lake that was fucking 60 minutes away. So they spent two hours of their trip driving. Uh, and then I guess we beat one boat by like 14 ounces. Yeah, but when you're, we were culling like an ounce, half an ounce at a time, it wasn't that close. I think any five fish we would have turned in would have gotten us the exact same place.
Yeah, yeah, they had pre-fished, and we had never been there before. We had no idea where we were. Never even seen the lake. I looked at it, I looked at it on a topo map, and that was it. And I marked a few spots down on the fish finder and said, let's try these. Yeah, they probably drove 60 minutes to the fish store, bought them, brought them back. No. I did carry my teammate again yesterday, so that felt good, especially from the back of the boat. It's harder to fish from the back, you see, chat. It's fun, Juju. It just like, I, like I said before, it's it's uh, it's kind of like playing a poker game with buddies when you're doing these smaller tournaments you know 50 bucks to get in you win a few hundred bucks if you win you're gonna go fishing anyway next year we want to try a couple of the big entry ones that are like 250 bucks 500 bucks center and they're like 100 boats just to see I mean we, we're not good enough but it'd be fun Oh, that was a really, really bad. So that whoever said just grind small fish yesterday, I think they're wrong. I think it has to be. It's just way more effective to grind unusual fish to you and or that experience value. This is just shit. I'm doing different methods. That's not doing anything. I have three rods with three different methods. I don't think that's true with rigs either, Juju. I, it is with everything else, but I don't think so with the rigs. Because I use uh, bait fish constantly and get like no skill ups. I think it's a variety of techniques. I think they punish you for doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over, which makes sense. Three in the game, three in my state. I'm not sure what you were asking, but the rod laws in real life change based on where you are. Some states have no rod limits. Some have two. I think two is the lowest I've ever seen. I don't. I don't know if I've ever been to a state where it's only one. It's you, Juju, that said that you allowed more trolling than you are from shore, right? Which I'd never heard that one before either. But understandable. Rod limits are weird to me. I don't really uh, understand them. 
Because there's fish limits as well. Every fish has a limit. So, uh, having both seems redundant. People are either going to break the law or they aren't. I, I guess no. The, the, the sad reality is that the law probably, the redundancy of the law does probably exist for those that break the law. But do it in ways that are harder to track. Like people that catch a limit, go home, and come back. That's probably why the redundancy is in law. Because if there was a no rod limit, they could do that three times a day instead of twice. Oh, absolutely, Dreams. Me and my buddy uh, take our uh, daughters catfishing to increase our rod, size, our rod limit. And then they just play on their tablets most of the time. They reel in fish. They like to reel in fish. They just don't like fishing. There's a very few species around here where more rods is actually beneficial. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean that's same with like panfish here. Every person's allowed 25, so people that bring their kids out on the ice with them doubles their limit. So you don't care about rod limit, yeah. Trolling, I, I troll three rods when I troll. And I could maybe troll four. Without getting into some like highly specialized gear, it's hard to troll. Many more than that, anyway. One off the right, one off the left, and one off the back. You know, any more than that can be, you gotta get into some special gear to keep them from tangling. Yeah, I don't troll for anything that schools like that. Not in our local la or inland lakes. That you're going to hook up all of them at once. Two is rare. Uh, only freshwater fish I've fished that schools like that is perch. Where you're going to get like six lines at once. I troll for crappie, bass, pike, muskie. Usually when I troll, it's kind of universal. Pike, bass, muskie. You know what I mean? They, like they'll all hit. No, not... They don't school actively enough uh, to do... If you could troll three rods through the same school, sure, dreams. But, like I was just talking about, without specialized gear, like how do you troll three lures close enough? Our crappie schools aren't 30 feet wide, you know what I mean, to troll three rods, one off the right, one off the left, one off the back. Even two off the right are six foot apart. You know, when I do two off one side, I keep them like six foot apart. I haven't tried, like down south they do a lot of, I think they call it spider rigging for crappie. I haven't tried that up here, but I bet that would let you get three or four at a time sometime. But it's because it's a lot tighter group of baits 
and uh, a lot slower troll. No, it's where they run like as many rods as they're allowed off the front of their boat suspended down like this. And they kind of just drift with the current or really, really slow with their trolling motor to keep their lines at a near vertical presentation instead of horizontally trolling like we do behind a boat straight off the front. Really popular in like Kentucky. Yeah, see like this stream. Or that spider rigging straight off the front. Super slow though, super slow. They a lot of the time just drift in really slow current with it. And they'll just use a trolling motor to try to keep themselves straight. I went to Kentucky last spring, Kentucky Lake, and it was just every little channel was just loaded with boat spider rigged like that. The weird part is they keep the rod tips down too, like really close to water, and then they just sit there. It's usually two dudes sitting side by side on the front of the boat, staring at their rod tips, waiting for them to dunk dunk so they can pick them up. And overall, we got second yesterday. You mean overall on the season, as in the league? We got fourth in the league, I think. Third or fourth. I don't know. I didn't check standing since we weren't first is all that mattered. That was me and Jason. Me and my little brother got sixth overall. Which is a big improvement from last year. But still a ways to go. My little brother's getting a lot better. If I could just get him to, like, spend a little more time with his gear in between tournaments. Because, like, every time we get to a tournament, he's forgot to go shopping, hasn't tied anything up. How many teams are there? Uh, the Thursday League, I think we had 24 total boats. And the Sunday League was smaller. It was only 16, 17, something like that. The, the big tournaments next Sunday is our last big one. That's the big money one. The end of the year, we call it a classic. But like the, the grand championship. You have to have fished in X amount of tournaments in the league throughout the year to qualify for that. And then money from every one of those tournaments is pooled together to make the prize for the last one really big. I think I think it's like three grand to win next Sunday.
Yeah, I hope so. We didn't uh We didn't get to go practice the lake cuz it's fucking almost 2 hours away. But we didn't practice yesterday's lake either and got second. So sometimes it's just helpful. You can have too much faith in previous successes and fuck yourself over, I think. So at least in our experience. Gengar. Down payment for a new boat? Shit. I wish. Wish boats were cheap. The boat I want's only like 50 to 60 grand. That ain't a down payment. Down payments are usually usually at least 10%. At least. More like 20. Just win more. I wish. Yeah, we uh, unfortunately had a lot of fourths this year, which kept us out of the money a lot. We did get three wins, though. The f tournaments my little brother is, I don't expect to win much, especially because it's in my garbage boat and, uh, you know. Boom, bam, bam, bam. That league's a lot tougher, too. It's uh, more boats, and there's three, four boats that fish, like, semi-pro. One of them just won 20 grand yesterday. In, like, an MLF tournament or something. I might just go throw night crawlers on Sura. I'm kind of just over bottom fishing, but I want to get it done so bad. Oh no, they've gone bad. Sea dreams, you just select the ones you want to destroy. Not any extras. Spots on Amber have been pretty good. It's just never true, Gengar. Never true. have like six pages of baits and see how easy it is then I mean it's pretty easy I've done it yeah I'm not I don't care about silver I just want to catch fish that's the problem you'd think that that would be an easy thing to accomplish but it's it's not What's the weather like out there? Today seems okay, but the rest of the day seems like shit. The rest of the week. I don't know what I'm doing. The U.S. Weekly just set, reset today. 
You only got to catch one, probably, to get a guaranteed weekly right now. Not to rain on your parade, but... Let's let somebody one fish bear. I wonder if I could just throw potatoes at bear and have an okay hookup rate. I might try. It's only 13 bucks to those bears. I'm at uh, 98.3. The buzz. It's my radio station. Is it supposed to be an active spot? I'm thinking about just throwing uh, regular ass carp bait at uh, and potatoes for USD to gold. Horrible! Don't do it. Never. The only exchange rate for gold in this game that's any good is for repairing your gear. Everything else is awful. It's a horrible conversion. They want you to grind, man. They make some money off the few idiots who are willing to spend small fortunes on gear, but... I think it's a dollar for 99 silver. Depends on how much you buy. It's bad. The lake access unlock? Yeah, it's crazy money. And they're not that expensive to travel to, except like one. I just forgot what I was doing. Uh, fishing Planet is the other way around, where traveling to lakes is a big cost. It's not bad at all here. You catch like one fish, you pay for your lakes most of the time. Slap that Play-Doh. Yeah, you can tell me an active spot. I'll go fucking throw junk at it. Are they claiming it's like some crazy-ass wild boily combination? To make the travel, travel cost but Yeah, it's not hard to do here. I mean, 16 bucks. The Late Lakes, 31, 33. I mean, that's, that's literally two fish. Two fish. I mean, yeah, easy could be one there. The last two get cra kind of crazy. This one's nuts, but the fish here are always really good, too, so. It might be five, ten fish here, but you catch them very consistently. I don't, I'm never really worried about travel costs. On average, we're all trying to... Like, there's like a, like a silver per hour that we talk about. And like 250, 300 silver per hour is like pretty much industry standard what you're hoping for. Anything more than that and it makes it onto a hot spot list and goes to shit. Um, anything less than that and you're not doing well. I guess Yama's the worst because I do I do always spend like some extra time here to make it worth my time, but that's the brand new high level lake, so 
Oh no, it's not new anymore. This one's new. It's the highest level we've done. What's the bo what boilies does it say? Just out of curiosity, if it's what I got or not. I actually don't know that I have that many potatoes anymore. Oh, I'm down to 68 potatoes. Cocoa and cream. Isn't this? No. Potatoes aren't here. Or are they around this corner? No. Yes, no. That's winding. Citrus? Citrus? Is that a thing? Oh. It's not a thing. Maybe you just meant it's a, a citrus fruit. Okay. Probably. Oh, squid. That's close to citrus. Squid? It was squid and citrus. What the fuck, citrus? Pop up rig? Must not be. Deep squid. Citrus corn and dip. Lemon boily? Man, you're making this, you are giving me the most confusing information I've probably ever received in my life. Lemon boily. Dude, I got some juicy lemon. Juicy. Corn. Is there a citrus here? Citrus. Oh, it's hot. Apparently it's out of stock. It's still hot. Citrus corns. I don't know where the squid fell into this. Squid and herb and squid corn. Oh my god. This is why I hate carp fishing. Squid. Oh no, there's three different squids in corn. In corn. Squid and herb. Oh, must be the small ones doing well. Alright, that's enough wasted money. And I still probably got it wrong. Definitely didn't get the dips now that I think about it. It's alright, I got some dips. What was this? 55 something? 5580? I think is what you said. Eighty. It must be the other way.
I do fish IRL, yeah. Not a stupid question. I think plenty of people play this, don't fish at all. Not in Russia, unfortunately. What did you say then was dreams fifty something eighty? Where the f how does that exist? It doesn't exist. Unfortunately, I can't. Can anyone scroll up and see what he said? Because I feel like I'm just running way out of the way. No, maybe it exists. 55.30. Oh, threes look a lot like eights. I might pay 13 bucks just to reset my position. Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. So here's camp. <laughs> here's where I spawned in. It's going to be like, I don't know, the 55 seems hard to get. Isn't that this way? No, it's this way. It's going to be like right here on this point. big boy gear. Never thought about playing a game about fishing though? No? It's good fun. I like, I mean, I think these games, if you, if you enjoy grindy simulators, you know, which is a pretty popular genre. Um, they're fun. I have no idea what he said to use. It was like lemon and citrus. Probably dipped in lemon or citrus acid. Let's go with citrus acid. That seems fine. I had that one. I don't know where I'm throwing. We're just going to throw out. It's probably off to the left or something, but we're just going to throw out. Quick check on the old maggot rig. Yeah, filthy maggots. IRL session pretty much over there. It's uh it's free. It's free. So you got no reason not to give it a shot.
Maggots dipped in citrus acid sounds fucking tight, honestly. I didn't throw far enough. Unless you're the maggot. Probably not as cool if you're the maggot. Let's just do something weird here, like a, a method feeder. Is that still a boily? Oh. Never mind. We'll just do a pop up. Wait, that's pop up method. Sure, dude. specify where he's facing dreams it feels like positioning here is going to be uh important maybe not though so many places on old burgers so snaggy uh if you're american i will say this game's a little complicated um specifically in carp fishing it's not something we do <laughs> at least most americans do um I didn't put any feed mix on that. All right, the actual boily thing were, oh, random method. Do I have a tiny reel on this? Yes, I do. That could have been bad. Yes, I do. Are you Russian or Alaskan with those fish species? I like that I can I try to identify where you're from by your fish species. That's a fun game we should play. I don't think grayling exists outside of, like, Alaska and Russia, do they? Do they make it into other parts of Northern Europe? Maybe some weird parts of Canada I don't... nobody lives in. You are in the EU, all right. Pike, birch, eel. I don't know what a birch is, so that one's throwing me for a loop, but I'm gonna... Birch, pike, birch, eel. I would guess Scandinavian, like that's just a guess.
Estonia. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> That's not like... Isn't that the place from... Uh, what was that game where you check passports? What was that game called? Under Finland. Oh, it's pretty close. Papers, please. Yeah. What was that called? Glory to the stars. Pretty close. Nailed it. I said I was just going to throw out a potato, and then I just didn't. All right, I'm going to change this one soon. Do you still have a good population of eel? Trying to figure out what this birch fish was, though. A roach, maybe? Bream. Oh, perch? Oh, is it just perch? Okay, okay. I would have definitely guessed Scandinavia then. I, luckily enough, I have a viewer who's a pretty big pike fisherman from Norway. Whitefish, you believe, directly translated? We have a lot of random things just called whitefish that are <laughs> confusing, too. So, yeah, if you guys, or if you're European, then you, you'll probably recognize a lot more of these species. Like, as an American, we don't have... These are invasive. We ha uh, No, not... I've never seen black carp. We have grass carp. Uh, we don't have bleak, bream. We do have burbot. Chinese sleeper, I've never heard of it. We have a species of our own chub, but I don't think it's any relation. Barbel, we do have common carp. No roaches, no crucians, gibbles, tench. Grassies are stocked and invasive. Uh, I know leathers and mirrors. Mere carp we do have now, but they're also not native. Perch we have, pike. No rough tench bream. Oh, that's just the late the fish here. Damn it. Uh, we do have some grayling species in Alaska. We have some char species, but like I don't ever hear about them. I don't know them. And we have a smelt species. Obviously, we have our own three catfish species. Four, five, six catfish species, something like that. You mean sturgeon? Ah. There's a lot of species of sturgeon, which I didn't realize we do have a couple species here in the States. Salmon, obviously, we have. Big head carp are the big invasive one we're trying to keep out of our waters that's here. None of these. We have some things called herrings, but again, I don't believe they're actually related to herrings. I think it's just we use stolen language. We do have browns. We do have some lampreys. Probably invasive. I don't know a lot about them. Cohos. Chinooks. Dollies in Alaska. This is a made-up fish, I believe. Or no, it's a very weird fish. I've never heard of it. Not in real life, I mean. Crayfish, frogs. Yeah, we got those. There's something very similar to a gudgeon, but a different name. So yeah, like I said, as an American, the game's... Uh, we definitely don't have a nine-spine stickleback. We got pink salmon, pike, pumpkin seed... 
Are these native to Europe? Pumpkin seeds? Or is this uh, an invasive species for you guys? You're Swedish, though? Okay. I didn't realize you guys had a grayling way up there. Okay. I thought uh, it was would have been further east. Actually. Yeah, sockeyes we got. Basically the salmon species we've got. Uh, Xander is almost identical to our walleye, but different in slight ways. Oh, I have fish. I didn't think about that though too. You have like the whole extra. Uh oh. S somebody fucked up his setup. I have a seven kilo leader on. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no, I'll get him. I'll get him. Probably just break it? Fuck y'all. You catch your fish. I ain't no coward. I will, Jesse. I don't care if I have a 7 kilogram leader on. I'm at bear. Might not catch this fish. It is a very snaggy lake. The key to not getting snagged here, catch fish. I'm not going to give up, Jasky. I'm just saying. The fish might win. Which is funny because I haven't really caught any big fish here yet. So. Fuck off, Cricket. The fish can't win there? How can it not win there? Oh, really? Can it not? I, I thought this was a lot longer distance than it looks. How far is it across there? My binoculars don't tell me how far it is, plus I don't know how much water is on the other side of that grass. I'm pretty sure I've been spooled here. No, snags don't run away. Usually when you get like hooked on a log, it doesn't 
run. <laughs> that clicking noise is the sound of line being stolen from my reel, for those who are unaware. That's what that clicking noise is. That one right there, that's the fish stealing all your line like a jerk. Carp are well known line thieves. It does not show on screen exactly how far the fish is. It does show uh, over here off my nose. You see that little that little white line on what looks like a little, what do they call bobbins? Like a bobbin? Yeah, yeah, a bobbin. Uh, that is how much line is left on my spool. So I know I have 350 meters of line on my spool, and I'm missing about three quarters of my spool currently. Therefore, the fish is math away. He appears to have run into some sort of stop, though, because he's still got plenty of strength left to pull, but doesn't seem to have anywhere left to run. There's only 120 meters across. I mean, my line says otherwise, Dreams. It's not running away though, it's running across. You can see the direction of my line and the direction of the lake. Away would be that way, north. I'm at the southern end of Bear. He has run west. Bear runs north-south. No one's ever set foot on the west side of Bear to really know how far away it is. For all you know, it just looks like land over there, but it's water. It's an illusion. I think the problem would be if I don't run early enough. Oops, 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 oops. If I don't run early enough, I can't get out on that point. I think you're probably right that it would be hard to get spooled, but... Yeah, but they can't go there to know for sure, Dream. They, they're only going off measurements from A to B. If, and if you believe that there's no places in this game where, like, water exists that it shouldn't, you haven't tried as hard as I have to fall through the map. You asked, I said, no, 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 that's not how this went, Dreams. What you said was you can't get spooled on bear, and I said you can get spooled on bear. And then you said, no, you just run. And then I said, how far is it across bear?
No, no, you said I, you said you, I asked, you helped. But like, you told me I, I couldn't get spooled, and I told you I could. I don't know where the help is there. I still don't believe it's only 120 meters. Cause like, where the fuck's that fish? <laughs> oh, I am facing more north than I realized. Not true west is over there. So where is that fish right now on the map? You can't see anything over there. That's the fucking issue. Because, like, that's not sure. Wait, yes, it is. That is sure. He's on the other side of that peninsula? I don't know. Let's go for a run. an invisible wall. I don't even know where I am. Stop and make some coffee. I think the most upsetting thing is that my other rods hadn't gone off yet. This is, there's trees out there, but I can't stand there. those trees get there but I can't can you drag fish through that I know you can cast into it and get snagged but I don't need my flashlight do you want it I can see in the dark I have special eyes I'm like a dwarf I could see exactly that, that there's nothing for it, like, puts a glow on things. Did you try that on a whim, Hardcore, or is that some Google... I'd be proud of you if you solved that on your own. Unlikely, but... No, 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 not that Hardcore's not a smart boy. It's just, like, people are really good at figuring things out with Spotted Discord, yeah. It's like building your own Magic the Gathering deck. You're never going to build one better than the internet. wrong it's not wrong it's it's true cat you're way better than the internet you are the internet fuck phone typing
I wonder how old that emote is of Alice. In my mind, she still looks just like that, but I'm sure if I compared it to her today... Hey fish, if you come here, I'll give you all the bait you can eat. You don't, we don't gotta fight like this. You like these here maggots? I'll give them to you. He's just chilling. Don't laugh at me, you stupid squirrel bird. Pretty confident it's a squirrel now. Yeah, that's a squirrel, right? Remember when I used to be able to make dolphin noises? Those were the days. I can't tell if he's just too heavy for my shitty leader to reel in or if he's actually still really fighting. Answer is put the old reel assistant on the reel button and wait and see what happens. I can't do it anymore. Not like I used to be able to. I hear another bell going off now. I used to be able to, yeah. Uh, I had a tooth pulled and it fucked with my airflow. Now it's it's less dolphin pitched. Uh, I uh, don't have it on my mouse. I have it on a button on my keyboard. It's a, a two and a half ounce pyramid sinker. I think it's coming closer though. Anybody uh, got a magnifying glass? I think my spool is slowly filling up. Did I just hear a gunshot? In the game? It might be real life. Do not shift real. You always feel like I shift real. I can't regular real. I do not shift real in fish uh, that are of decent size. Usually it doesn't help because like in this scenario, I'm clicking drag anyway. So like if I push shift here, I'm just gonna like let out line anyway. Uh, but I also find shift reeling in fish loses a lot of fish. Like my, my pop off rate, wh which is where you're just reeling it in, you didn't do anything wrong and the fish just pops off is 10 times higher when I'm holding shift. I need to trim my nose hair? I do. It's true. Regularly. Unfortunate problem. A lot of hair in the facial region on this body. Very little body hair elsewhere. Uh, there's a few areas. It's just not consistent. I don't have the full fur suit. Thankfully.
with the beard, the eyebrows, the nose. They thick. They all grow together right in here somewhere. My hair, my beard. I have to shave up to here. Under my glasses, I have to take my glasses off to shave. That's how you know your beard is too thick. And then my eyebrows go right down into here. I don't get a unibrow much anymore though after 20 years of plucking it. Hear the occasional black hair on the tip of my nose. Anyone else? You gotta pluck that thing. Just one. Does shift make this any faster? Really hard to judge. I don't think it did. I'm trying to find a better background color for the spool. Five kilogram grassy? Oh, only God knows. It bothers you again, get rid of it. Pluck that thing off there. And jack the rod up with right mouse pumper. But that doesn't do anything when you're pull. If I lift my rod, it just pulls line. It doesn't, I mean, maybe it makes your brain feel like you're fighting, but it does when they're small. And then I do the same thing when there's, when they're small, I just throw them at me. And like with a shift reel right mouse pumper, I launch them out of the water and catch them. Shouldn't it tire the fish out more? No. No, one would not think. That would only work if you're not pulling drag. But if I lift my rod... Oh, wait. I can't lift my rod? Because I'm holding... If I... Oh, it's too heavy. It's too heavy. But it's, it just pulls drag. I'm just pulling line out of the spool. Uh, in real life, drag isn't this fluid as it sounds in the game. Uh, it skips a beat every once in a while, and it's not that smooth. So in real life, pulling the rod up does a little more because it adds the bend of the rod into the drag, but not in the video game. But right, like the line just pulls out. The more effort the fish... Right, but... That's not what you're doing, Rectal. Not if you're pulling drag. You're not... You're using... Logic dictates you using more effort and accomplishing nothing it means you get tired faster. <laughs> and that's what you're doing if you're lifting your rod when it's pulling drag. That would translate correctly if your reel was stronger. But when I lift my rod right now, the little bit that it'll allow me, you hear my drag spin faster? That's because all I'm doing by moving my rod is pulling more line out of my reel. I'm not pulling the fish any. I'm just pulling line out of my reel. And then you can move your reel down and pretend like you made gains, but you didn't, because all I did was pull line out of my reel and then reel it back up. The reel limits how much force you can pull on the fish, period. 
It doesn't matter how much you move your rod. It doesn't matter what else you do. The reel itself is limiting the amount of force you can apply to the fish. Currently, my gear is limiting my force to seven ish kilograms that's as much as i can pull no matter how hard i pull on the rod seven kilograms is still the max sure yes in and in, in a sen if you are to lift your rod in a scenario yes then yes 100 percent. you can tire a fish out faster I think that applies to the game as well. Um, however, I think that situation is a lot rarer than you believe it is. Just because the fish stopped pulling drag doesn't mean it's... That could just mean it turned. So you're, I guess, I guess you're, you're continuing to apply maximum force by making sure you keep that fish running. Yes. The salmon on Volkov will run then stop. They will also jump a lot. Salmon turn and jump a ton. They're very easy to identify. You have a salmonoid species on your rod because the way they fight is very unique. So I think you're keeping a uh, more constant pressure by doing that. Absolutely rectal, but um, the amount your the amount of extra wear and tear on your gear to like horse on them. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's really adding up. I used to try it all the time. Yeah. I'll, yeah. You do a pretty good at a job of identifying species in this game by how they fight. This is a carp. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, uh, Xander will do the thing where they turn sideways. You actually can see it in some clear lakes. They'll turn sideways and just, like, hold. They'll go very Hodor and just position themselves sideways. and makes it so you can't get them to really move at all, but they're not running and pulling drag. In that situation, maybe horsing on them is tiring them out a little faster. The salmon will run straight at you, yeah, and make you lose them. They're dicks. I sure hope I can get this fish through this grass. Oh, wait. I see the fish. He dead. <laughs> he dead. But, like, that's the perfect example of what I'm saying, right? There wasn't hardly any displacement on that fish by walking backwards, by using my entire body to walk backwards. Some, but very fucking little. Because the reel limits you from being able to... <laughs> okay! That was almost worth the time. With the plus one, it was. Nice seven kilogram liter fish. That's why you fight them, boys. How many caught the line? Pfft, never. I think that's my PB leather carp. Is worn to hell? I doubt it. Because the drag was low, which causes less wear on the friction brake, yeah. Yeah, the mech span worn to hell. Doesn't have a cafe, no. On the maggot rig, of all things. See, like, I'll shift reel these and then fucking flang them into my feet.
Simp yeah, I do too, Big Bean. Um, that that I wouldn't call what I just caught that on simple, but yeah, I agree. This rig, I don't think it's done shit. Yeah, I caught my first blue tag on a potato, you know? At like level seven as well. And that's great. Oh, really, Hardcore? Can you see? That's funny. That's very funny. I don't remember what boily I was supposed to run here. What, what was the other option you said? Squid, I thought. Squid and something. What went with squid? Did I buy a sinking boily instead of a pop up? I don't see squid. I'm, I know I bought something squid. Maybe I just bought a squid corn. Or was it oh was it squid corn with lemon? Dipped in uh, squid and fish or citrus. We'll do citrus, I guess. Lemon lemon seems real good though. Or well, decent. Was that my PB leather carp on the seven kilo liter? Absolutely. Citrus flavored maggots. <laughs> Yummy. Jasky, is this an incredibly early day for you or an incredibly late day for you? I'm very confused by this time for you. There we go, I paid for my trip and the boilies up. A little of bolt. Ah, the late early. Literally. Oh, the old nap. I hate that. I stayed up like 26 hours yesterday or day before yesterday I guess technically whatever into yesterday then I took a little nap before my daughter got here then I went back to sleep so I ended up sl sleeping like I don't know like a three and a half hour nap and then like a 11 hour sleep I'm energized today you can tell have to be casting one? Yeah, usually me too. I'm just trying to get my bottom fishing to 100, so I'm committed to the grind. 1.6%. Then I gotta do it with float fishing to 80, which should be a lot easier.
I'm gonna throw some random carp ground bait out there and see if it helps. It'll probably just hurt, but. Yeah, I'm a really good sleeper and uh, I feel bad for those who can't because it's gotta be hell. Yeah, Lower Tunguska. Are you a terrible sleeper, Jessica? I didn't know this about you. That fish stopped biting because I shot... Nope. Dude, maggot rig? Why are you OP? They're pretty kind with... Uh, rotten fish actually in this game they still pay you okay i don't know if it's supposed to be straight out or what we'll try over the grass the problem is if i ever reel that rod in it's probably snagged it's got to catch a fish now lives there till fish Five. Dude, I said when I get to 100, I'd start using my scoop a little bit again, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. Maybe I should just start scooping. Are these the... No, these aren't the... Are these the diving beetles? No, these are the diving beetles. How many of those do I have? Two. What the fuck are these? Where do they even come from? Where did I even get them? Oh, it's right there. Bed lice? Gross. You were doing really well. What happened? I threw you in the wrong spot. Oh, they're added to Yama. Do they work on Yama? <laughs> they work okay. Oh, really? They're cute. Tiny little crustaceans. geniuses should take less energy to scoop water less resistance oh no my feet are wet Ugh, gross I hope I'm not wearing socks but then that's even grosser Bloodworms just look like a tiny little sausage. I always forget that Caddisfly is actually a bug. Like, the graphic of it just looks like a cocooner. And then you turn it, and it's got little legs and a face. And butt tentacles.
little fish, Jasky. Nice little fish. Nature is amazing. All right, I gotta figure out my schedule today. We've got this stupid appointment to get my driver's license renewed because chat yelled at me. That's it too. I gotta go to the tackle shop. I gotta, they canceled cheerleading. That fixes that. So we do stream till driver's license, then take our newfound driver's license to the tackle shop, use our gift card we won, then we go fishing. There's an impromptu thrown together fishing tournament today that I'm going to go win and then buy cocaine. Fish for cocaine. Yeah, and you don't see the mayflies got these little... I guess they're little swim assists, I'm assuming. Dude, he looks like he could swim a million miles an hour with all those little paddles. If he get those things in sync, you'd never catch him. How'd I catch him? Yeah, dude, my driver's license has been expired for, like, over two years. And I didn't forget about it. But we that was my, want to be my go-to if I got pulled over. Oops, I forgot. Who looks at the expiration date on their license? I don't buy cigarettes or alcohol. So, like, I don't get ID'd. Ever. No one even cared? Yeah, but that's Germany. Can't you, like, drink at home with your parents when you're four? I dated two German foreign exchange students, and they were both alcoholics. At, like, I dated one at, like, 15 and one at 16 both alcoholics actually a hog dreams it wasn't even joking How's the, how's the buyer event? Not good. The leather carp came on maggots. <laughs> uh, I would say it's been about amber. Yeah, it came on uh, citrus maggots. And a size 3 hook. Uh, the lemon combo has been okay. I've now switched to double lemon, so we'll see if the bite rate gets good. I don't feel like Bobber is that much guesswork. I 
I think it's the hardest to learn. And different bobber fish certainly react different. But when I'm, it's very rare that I miss a fish on bobber setting the hook that I didn't expect to. But I do a lot of telly. It maybe matches different. Yeah, some species are definitely different. And some of them will pull down. Some of them will run. Some of them will do the half-ass pull down. And I think that's the one maybe that people struggle with the most. Where they'll pull the bobber, the bobber like 90% of the way under the water. But that wasn't the actual hookup. I've always hated bobber fishing in fishing sims, though, because IRL bobber fishing is one of two things. You're either setting the hook because you're trying not to let it swallow it, so you're setting the hook when you see action on the bobber. It doesn't have to be all the way underwater. IRL, if a bobber is all the way underwater, the fish has swallowed it, like 90% of the time. Yeah, some push the bobber up and make it fall over on its side. Uh, smelt, just run to the side. They don't actually ever pull it, rarely pull it under. <laughs> Frogs and mussels are rocket ships. Carp jump all over the place. And that one's weird to me. They pull shit like boing, boing, boing. They never seem to uh, bite from the same spot. They're constantly like tugging and relocating. And then you have the roach, the worst of the bobber fish. Doop, 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 for 40 fucking five minutes. Yeah, these boards, that's where I was. They nibble forever. Scoop these boots. Yeah. Ooh, the mother load. Two, three caddis flies. Three blood worms. One diving beetle and a bunch of algae. Why is the algae always in a donut shape? Is that a common shape for Russian algae? The donut? It's not even like the shape of the scoop. You know, maybe if it was D-shaped or something, but it's just like a really weird shape.
All right, I said I was gonna try just like a potato. I'm gonna do it now. <clears throat> a potato. Oh no. Kapow. Broke your rod. F. Jesus Lord, bird. Jesky, how was Splatoon 3? Someone made it a point to come in here and tell me that you said the Queen's death did not affect the launch of Splatoon 3. Which made me happy. What can Splatoon add in a sequel? More paint colors? Two grandmas. Oh, it's gamma. More game modes, new story mode. Oh. That stuff's successful in Splatoon, huh? I always thought Splatoon was just a competitive game. Were squids binary to begin with? Squids seem like the type of animal that just don't have a sex. Is there a male and female squid? Squids have a lot of sex? They they seem like they'd fuck, dude. Like, why not? You're ma mostly gelatin. If I was a gelatin being, I'd fuck all the time. Other gelatin beings? That sounds nice. <laughs> they are, are male and female squids. The males package their sperm into sperm to fours. Squid sex and babies. That's a great title for your website. I heard a little, a little draggy there. I like that noise. Oh, my drag's low. Where he tears off one of his legs and gives it to a ladies. Does a squid really even have a leg? I don't. I. I feel like. What, what, like the tentacle? Squids have tentacles at most, and even that's like a stretch. They definitely don't have hands. Most of what we know about the reproduction is educated guesswork. Females keep their sperm sp sper sperm uh, to fours. It looks like sp sperm metaphors, but it's about sperm. So I feel like I gotta emphasize the sperm. Anyway, then they'll release the spermy eggs into a huge gelatinous mass. Also, we know about the reproduction is guesswork. Some other species of squid aggregate in predictable places to mate and spawn, but no such behavior is known for the humble squid. Professor Gilly, oh come on now. May have seen a couple mating once in the Gulf of California, but the experience was short on intimate details. 
What the fuck am I reading? This is squids for kids, by the way. Professor Gilly may have seen a couple mating once. May have. Don't know. He was didn't give us enough of the dirty, intimate details. It's literally the animal with tentacles? No, that's an octopus. An octopus is the animal with tentacles. Not a squid. Squ I think a lot of people think squids are like... Cooler than that. That's the octopus. Squid, nobody gives a fuck about the squid. It's time for me to admit that I definitely was thinking more about jellyfish than squids until right this minute. Well, the minute where I said the thing about no one cares about squids. It's because I was thinking about jellyfish. Fuck off, Jasky, all right? There's a lot of squids that are like jellyfish. Look at this Humboldt one. It's clear. It's clear. Or this picture here, it's clear. How do... I still want to know about Professor Gilly. A female Humboldt squid can mate and store sperm from a young age. The most common place to find stored spermatophores on a female with a bunch of weird letters body is in your buccal membrane. The area of tissue surrounding her mouth. If you look on the reddish purple membrane around the squid's beak and see soft white needles a centimeter or less in length, those are sperm. You may also see little whitish pimples full of sperm. Somehow the sperm. <laughs> huh, I'm not. All right. This is an x ray of a squid, isn't it? Not a clear squid. I can't tell what that image is. It's garbage quality. When a female's eggs are ripe, ripe? Her first task is to mix them with jelly. She has two different glands that produce two different kinds of jelly. The whatever the fuck glands coat each egg with jelly that facilitates development. We know this because successful laboratory fertilization of Humboldt squid eggs requires the addition of the whatever gland extract. Good thing we did that. Jelly from the other gland does not seem to be necessary for development. The pride provides the structure of the egg's mass and may repel predators or parasites. Spawning itself has... Okay, we're going to learn more about Gilly, I think. Spawning itself, the paralarva with provost... Whatever... All right, anyway, spawning itself has never been directly observed. On a research cruise in the Gulf of California in 2006, several females in aquaria on the deck spawned, but it happened in the middle of the night, so no one saw them do it. What the fuck? You went out to research squid sex, caught a bunch of them. You, you, you got a ship, took it out into the Gulf of California. I didn't even know that California had a gulf. Caught squids, put them in a tank, went to sleep without recording them? Nobody stayed on watch? I feel like there's a lot of money and effort that went into figuring out squid fucking, but they forgot cameras. So now we just have a working hypothesis. For how egg mass is created, the female mixes eggs and jelly inside her mantle, squirts this mixture out her funnel, then holds it in her arms!
In the center of her arms is her mouth. Why are you calling them arms? <laughs> Beefy squid arms. I don't trust any scientist that calls them arms. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah, she's holding it in her arms. In the center of her arms is her mouth. With its surrounding buccal membrane and the stored sperm and different sperm words. This position allows the sperm to finally do their duty and fertilize the eggs. As is in almost all squids, there's no parental care. Mama Humble releases the egg mass in the open ocean and goes about her business. She'll probably continue to eat and grow as she spawns the rest of her eggs over the course of a few weeks or months. They have about 10 million eggs each, and only, and the only egg mass ever found and studied by scientists contained between half a million and a million eggs. The, mass suggests, the math suggests that a successful female may spawn 10 to 20 masses in her lifetime. I just feel like that's not nearly enough research on this squid. Like, w and they, the fact that they took the time to do this research and did it so poorly makes me upset. Finding the one mass was a fantastic accident. On the same 2006 cruise where the females spawned on the deck, some scientists went diving in the middle of the Sea of Cortez to collect jellyfish. About 16 meters below the surface, they swam into a gelatinous blob the size of a small car. They collected part of it in jars and brought it back to the boat. The jars were full of squid eggs. I mean, this is just shitty science, dude! Meme librarian, thank you for the 70 months. I hope you're not uh, a squid scientist, because you all seem bad at your job. You know a little bit now, meme. I just read to you. I don't like to read, and I read to you. Oh, you just too. Oh, you have to watch the VOD then. You can learn about squids. Basically, Mama Squid holds sperm, blows out giant egg mass. That's all you learn. This, and squid scientists suck. Nobody's ever seen them fuck. Nobody. Not even the people who set out on a quest with a boat to see them fuck. They managed to fuck that up. By not watching the tank overnight. And that was the one shot they had, apparently. They could never re recreate that scenario of squids in a tank. Never again to be seen. Hardcore, you didn't even respond to that guy, dude. He was talking to you. A quest. Yeah. Don't make fun of my wording. They call the squid's tentacles arms. And they kept calling it a cruise. I think it was just a bunch of old people trying to fuck and ran into some squids. Thought, let's learn. What the fuck's this word mean? I gotta Google it.
the oh they don't last long what a dumb article fuck you stanford university you're a shit school Tentacles, Jasky. Six caddis flies. Can arms be tentacles? Are tentacles? Arm, legs is the first thing that comes up on Google. Considered legs, arms or legs. Appendages, arms. Renewable? Feet. Considered limbs. Let's go with considered limbs. Legs, wings, flippers, and tentacles are just some examples of a, verse, a diverse variety of limbs. I would have accepted limbs, I guess. Are tentacles considered arms? In strict anatomy term and an anatomical terms, they are arms. Fuck. Squids and cuttlefish have arms, but are also tentacles. Cephalopod tentacles are arms lack and oh, wait. Cephalopod tentacles and arms lack bones. Science! Why do you do this? I'm just saying, dude, if I wanted to see squids fuck and I set out on a goddamn quest, I could do it. Better than Stanford. Because if you don't walk on it, it's an arm? No! That's definitely not why. What? All right, discovery.com. You got me with this clickbait link. Octopuses don't have... Isn't it octopi? I feel like we're already starting off on a bad foot. Octopuses... versus octopi. Octopi is the oldest plural of octopus. It's fine. It's an acceptable way to write octopus. Is Octopuses don't have tentacles. By Mel Cassell. Your name rhymes. How can I fucking trust you? What exactly do these cephalopods have then? Question mark. Many people refer to octopus limbs as tentacles, but technically, octopuses don't have any tentacles at all. Instead, they're arms. When you're talking about cephalopods, tentacles tend to be much longer than arms and only have suckers at their clubbed ends, where arms are shorter, stronger, and suckered all the way down. That was it. What has tentacles then? Cephalopods? I don't know. Tentacles also typically come in pairs. Squids and cuttlefish have eight arms plus a pair of feeding tentacles. Oh. So that's why they've got arms and tentacles. They've got both. They live in the high life. Suckered all the way down.
the next I'm gonna read the next article too because it's intriguing do octopuses dream how would you know science you've never even seen squids fuck no they have arms they don't have tentacles Octopuses don't have tentacles. Stop lying about it. New footage shows a sleeping octopus changing colors, indicating the creature may be dreaming. Na na na! Alright. This is a video that that's octopus can solve complex puzzles requiring pushing and pulling. All right, and then it's a video of an octopus getting itself out of a jar. That's an <laughs> that's not a complex puzzle. That's bitch, I'm trapped in a jar. And I want out. Try getting more impressive would be me getting into a jar before getting out of it. Yeah, yeah, they screwed the lid on, and it unscrewed the lid. I wouldn't call that a complex puzzle. That's a simple machine. Therefore, how can it be a complex puzzle? Biggin, biggin. Oh, not so big anymore. Put any other animal in a jar of its size and see if it tries to screw the lid. They didn't put an they didn't put an octopus in a giant jar and see if it screws the lid. Also, octopus have suction cup arms, dude. I feel like you know how easily something could just accidentally take the lid off a jar if it had oct suction puss puss suction puss arms. You decided right, right, Brian? That sounds like Stanford, honestly, and their science. Hey, Carp. How'd you even pull drag? You're not that big. People are like really impressed by animals. Low intelligence. And I'm just not, I guess. That's why I'm a fisherman. I'm gonna watch this video of this octopus. All right, he's putting the, he put the octopus into a tiny jar. Wait a minute, we can watch this shit on stream. People do this for a living. Octopus in a jar, a small jar. I think that's important to say, not a large jar. A small jar. Now it's high speed. You can tell the speed has gone up tremendously. He's accidentally twisted it a tiny... Mo oh my god. This octopus that is trying to figure out why its body is shoved into a tiny... Holy shit. It's... Oh my gosh. What, what in the world? How could it possibly... Who the fuck taught this octopus righty-tighty lefty-loosey? How could it be done? It's a fucking, it's got two threads. Look how much bigger that poor octopus was than the jar. Of course, he doesn't want to leave the jar. He's happy there. He just wondered, what the fuck, why am I trapped? But once he's, uh, he got the lid off, he's chill. Chill as fuck. Let's watch an octopus dream. 
If you add creepy fucking music to it, it seems a lot more like a dream. They're not really smart. Come back, thank you for the 61 months. We need more descriptive words. That's what I've, I've said this for years and years and years. We need far. Ooh, shame. More descriptive words, because really, it's just like that's a that's a lot. It's really smart. If it was a person and you said they were, you'd be like Einstein's really smart. Can also open jars to get that food. Bears can do that. My dog can open its food thingy with a latch on it to get its food. Cats can open doors. Yeah, but they were designed to do that, Lunar. It's not like they learned it. It's literally just like their fucking biology. Is it not our biology to learn what we learn? I don't think so. No. Because, like, I, I learned so much useless information. Like, that tentacles, or that octopuses don't have tentacles. That's completely irrelevant to me and a, being a human being and my survival. You're comparing a cephalopod to a mammal, though. You're saying really smart for the intelligence of a cephalopod. If you wanted to say octopuses are really smart for cephalopods, I'd be like, okay. But the statement octopuses are really smart is false. The statement that any animal is really smart is false. When we have... <laughs> a much higher intelligent being, or higher intelligence being that exists. It's just not comparative. If you were to say yes, like, you know, apes are the most intelligent mammal. That's still inaccurate, aren't it? Why compare us to other animals? Oh, if you want to just say smart for an animal, I would even accept that as a better de explanation than smart. But, like, people use this argument that, like, dolphins are smarter, X animal is smart, therefore it's extra cruel to be mean to it. Like, dumb animals, it's fine. But dolphins is smart. Isn't smart like relative? Yeah, it is. What is smart? Not me. Not a dolphin.
<laughs> yeah, what is not relative? Everything is relative. I actually use over 20% of their brain. Their tiny peanut-sized brain. I mean, it's fine, Jasky, but it makes for a less interesting topic here. And I think that my biggest issue with that is like Lunar's original statement of octopuses are very smart, sad to put it in that tiny container. And I was uh, like that. I know Lunar meant nothing by that, but like I've heard that so much. That's really what started me sit making this big argument for animals aren't smart is like we do put animals on this like list of the smarter they are, the better we have to treat them when they're still fucking dumb. Like, the difference between a, a bear and a dolphin, intelligence-wise, like, if you hear someone talk, it sounds like the dolphin's a goddamn genius out there doing your taxes, but, like... And in the grand scheme of things, uh... All animals are just un uh, truly lower intelligence beings, right? Like, they can be better than their neighbor or their relatives, but the argument about, like, protecting certain species because of intelligence and stuff like that is silly to me. And that's really why I started making more of a joke. A pig is smart for an animal, especially for a farm animal we eat. Which is just another weird human justif- All the human brain does is come up with weird justifications for our actions. Who the fuck- what, like, what does it really matter if you eat them? This idea that they don't go to waste is funny to me. Because it's not okay if we kill each other and eat. <laughs> Bad to kill a deer and just leave it to rot. Okay if you eat it. Bad to kill a person. Badder to kill a person and eat it. I don't know where this logic is. What's the... I mean, we're just making it up, really. We, we ju Mental gymnastics, the human being's mental gymnastics, is a true fa fa uh, passion of mine. killing them for no reason. I mean, you're killing you're still killing them for an unnecessary reason. It's a it's a just you're, what you're saying is it's okay to kill them for your justified reason. Like I hunt. Eating humans as a human is like extremely bad for you. Isn't that weird? Lots of other animals eat each other, or eat themselves, or whatever. I'm trying. You know what I'm trying to say. Lots of other animals cannibalize. There we go. Uh, I would argue you're wrong there, Lunar. I don't know the actual numbers, but uh, they may not. No, I, I think that's just wrong. I mean, even horses will eat each other. Pigs will eat everything. Probably, I feel like reading about that one would take too long. I, all right, why is cannibalism bad? Uh, 
Why is Cam Google searches? Uh, why is cannibalism illegal in Idaho? Is the first thing that comes up when you type "Why is cannibal?" Why and second is why is cannibal corpse so bad? <laughs> Sorry, dumpster gravy. It's the second thing. Unhealthy. Let me fix what people should be googling. Some examples of diseases trending by cannibalism include. Kuru, which is a prion disease that degenerates the brain. It was prevalent in Papua New Guinea, where tribes practiced cannibalism and consumed... I thought, I thought it was more of a brain thing and not a meat thing. We're going to start over. Cannibalism, that can see. Yeah, we know what cannibalism is. Cannibalism is common ecological interaction in the animal kingdom and it was recorded in more than 1,500 species. The rate of cannibalism increases in nutritionally poor environments. Like I said, horses eating horses, blah de blah de blah Cannibalism regulates population numbers in most species. Although, although it may be a benefit to the individual, it's been shown that the presence of cannibalism decreases the expected survival rate of the whole population and increases the risk of consuming a relative. That last, that and seems unnecessary, but funny. You might eat your cousin. Uh, it's super prevalent in aquatic ecosystems. We know that. Up to 90% of organisms engage in cannibalistic activity at some point in their life cycle. Cannibalism is not restricted to, restricted to carnivorous species. It also occurs in herbivores and detrivores. Worms will eat themselves, huh? Normally in, oh, when with worms and stuff, it normally, oh no, this is sexual cannibalism. Sexual cannibalism, separate topic, involves consumption of the male by the female individual before, during, or <laughs> during, or after copulation. Other forms of cannibalism include size structured cannibalism, and the word I can't pronounce, cannibalism. Do they like finish still? The spike. If they, if you consume someone during cannibalism, is the goal to get them like right as they come, just before. Like they're already about to come, then you start eating them, and it's too late. You're pregnant. In environments where food, uh, the benefits of cannibalism. In environments where food availability is constrained, individuals can receive extra nourish, nutrition. Body, body, blah. blah, blah. This would in turn increase survival rate of the cannibal and thus provide an evolutionary advantage in environments where food is scarce. A study conducted on wood frog tadpoles showed that those that exhibited cannibalism tended cannibalistic tendencies had a faster growth rate and a higher fitness level than non-cannibals. Disease is transmitted through cannibalism. Cannibalism can potentially reduce the prevalence of parasites in the population by decreasing the number of susceptible hosts and indirectly killing the parasite in the host. It has been shown in some studies that the risk of encountering an infected victim increases when there is a higher cannibalism rate, though the risk drops as the number of available hosts decrease. However, this is only a case if the risk of disease transmission is low.
Cannibalism is an ineffective method of disease spread, as cannibalism in the animal kingdom is normally a one-on-one -on -one interaction, and the spread of disease requires group cannibalism. Thereby, it is rare for a disease to evolve to rely solely on cannibalism to spread. Some examples of diseases transmitted by cannibals, cannibalism in mammals include kuru, which is a prion disease that degenerates the brain. So this seems like it's been blown out of proportion. This disease is, was prevalent in Papua New Guinea. Everyone knows that if you know anything about cannibalism. Where tribes practice endocannibalism, which is eating the brain. So I, I'm not seeing anything here about eating our meat is bad. It's just our brain. Mad cow disease is another prion disease which is usually caused by feeding on contaminated bovine tissue by feeding contaminated bovine tissue to other cattle. I didn't realize that. I knew that like you stayed the fuck away from dead cows. Is human meat dangerous? Cannibalism, a health warning. Although the knee-jerk reaction to eating human flesh can be strong, the actual morality and ethics behind these feelings are not as simple as it here. Blah, 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 blah. That's what I'm saying. The health implications of eating colleagues. I love titles, dude. Although it may seem urban, the good news is that consuming cooked human flesh is no more dangerous than eating the cooked flesh of other animals. That's what I thought. So no, that's not a good argument for like why we justify not eating people. It's only human brains that are dangerous. And that took like a lot of effort, I think, by, if I'm not mistaken, that Kuru thing didn't become a problem until like generations of consuming each other brains. <laughs> Let's eat each other. Fuck yeah, bud. It is the, the I think I always thought one of the most I remember reading about Kuru in like high school and one of the most amazing things about it was you break out into uncontrollable laughter. Prions aren't a thing you can kill. Yeah. So it really makes you look like a crazy cannibal. Because you're just laughing uncontrollably. And at its peak, 
Only 2% of the d deaths from that village were due to cougar. And predominantly struck down females and children. Some villages became devoid of females. Ah, this sex difference uh, was because males believed that cu consuming human flesh weakened them during times of conflict. So females and children more commonly ate the deceased. And they did all the preparing the meat. Two percent killed all fifty percent of the female population. Uh, I doubt. Well, you're talking about a tribe, so there's probably survival rate issues there. Out the it says two percent of the deaths, right? Yeah, there's doesn't mean that ninety nine percent of them had kuru. It just means two percent of them actually died from it and not something else. The last victim of the disease died in 2005 that we know of. It doesn't say the meat would give them kuru. No, it specifically says there you will not get it from cooking the meat, from eating the meat. In this article from Medical News Today. Because prions are only a thing found in the brain. So you, if you were a cannibal you do, do clean them like a fish cut off their head throw that away gut them cook them and eat them and then be pretty safe anyway i'm not trying to advocate for cannibalism just discussing the mental gymnastics human beings have for why killing an animal to eat it is okay Oh, can it also be a nervous tissue? I don't know. Medical news today. I don't I don't know how trustworthy they are. Or how much effort they really put into trying to uh stop people from cannibalizing. It doesn't seem like a real big issue in the world yet. Oh, for sure, Gasky. But that, like I said, the mental gymnastics side of it, like. They do the same thing with animals. That was the smart animal topic, right? People also do the same thing with animals. Value the life more of a dog than a deer or a dolphin because it's smart. But then eat a pig. ethical question for some for sure i don't I, I, do you think it's really a bigger ethical question now i don't know maybe i mean now over like 
the days of starving to death, but. Yeah, that, that, I guess that, that aspect, Jasky, I could definitely see more than the, like, I'm sure there had to have been plenty of people who didn't enjoy, and maybe the conversation wasn't had as often, but the idea that people did not enjoy the process of killing and eating animals. But it, 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 like I said, that's just mental gymnastics, Blake. I mean, it is. The, the, because they're on paper, if it was just simple math, like comparing a one-to-one, -one, a dog to a deer, you're just saying I like dogs more because I had one as a pet once. I mean, that's like, if you, again, if you were to use radical ideas of the opposite about, you know, I hate pit bulls because one bit me once, right? Like, Yeah, the pro farming has its own issues as well. It would take... Uh, I don't think it's so much plant more as it is replace feed plants with food plants. Feed plants being plants that feed animals. Yeah, it's fine. I, I'm the same way, Blake. I don't eat dogs, and I don't eat people because of my own morals. I had somebody yelling at me on Facebook the other day that uh, you can't have morals if you don't believe in God, and I forgot I was going to research the why the fuck they were trying to explain that one to me. Apparently morality is a thing that was created by God. I don't know. I was trying to figure out what he was saying to me, but I just blocked him instead. Is the nitrogen or the methane from cow farts? Uh, I don't think it's just the fertilizers and stuff. It's the impact on the environment from giant farmlands and water usage. Neither is a perfect solution. But it's like everything, yeah. There's a Bible, so is there, yeah. But it, like, talk about a way to derail a fucking argument, though, when you're like, I don't do something not because of God, but because uh, morality, and then the guy's just like, morality doesn't exist without God. I'm like, oh, this argument is over, huh? I think millions is probably low, ain't it, Jasky? Millions sounds low, because there's... I, the, the the funny part is they're both, now, in my opinion, they're both irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Um, and it's another awesome example of the people suffer 
make sacrifices for the greater good while corporations don't because there's like so much worse going on for the environment and climate uh, for profit than the things we do but you know No, I don't even think the people are that fucked. It's the people in charge that are that fucked. The people that are profiting off us, the majority of us, that are that fucked. But they're not going to make any, sacri any significant sacrifices. It'll be us that stops eating as much meat and reduces our... That's the point, though, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's bigger. There are other giant fish in that glo in that climate environment besides our diet and what we drive, Jasky. There are there are other massive fish in there that we don't talk about because they're not as easy to discuss. And we don't have a, as many uh, alternative solutions for it. Yeah, you are misrepresenting the issue by talking about just, car, just cow farts. But there's also a giant... I there's so many issues in the beef industry that could be addressed as an as a step towards beyond the extreme of you know let's stop eating meat there are so many other issues that could address That is Chernobyl. But also nuclear power plants are the number one clean energy production we have on the planet. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Damn it, dumpster gravy. You're American, you're allowed. Shoot your artillery. Because, like, beyond cow farts, you have manure storage, which is another one that f uh, your vegan friends won't talk as much about. Um, however, again, a lot of manure storage is used for fertilizing feed crops that get fed to those animals and not to us. So there's still an argument there. But yeah, there's a, the whole picture needs to be laid out, and it would be so much more beneficial to humanity if we actually, like, Took a time to look at things beyond cow farts, but, you know, simple brain it says cow farts. We can't even think about next Thursday. It's true. And then those that are thinking about next Thursday are thinking about next Thursday's profits.
Hmm, is that true, Ellie? There's also a huge problem with soy, and I'm not sure why either, but... Well, we grow a lot of feed corn now, and we used to grow food corn. So I know in my state that that isn't true. But the, it is certainly believed that's possible, especially because certain types of crops destroy the land, and it's possible that we have wreaked havoc on enough land that it's no longer able to grow certain crops. It fucks the soil. We alternate soy and corn here. I thought it was the I thought it was the opposite, but I am not a farmer. It's not my living. Dust Bowl 2.0, yeah. What's the purpose? Fishing? And how does it work? Cast bait in water? Fish bite. I also think the majority of our soy is sent overseas, which is another thing I was talking about with a lot of farming and meat, if you want to separate the two, and whatever the fuck, there's another term for it, but um, is the amount of it that is that we ship globally and gets shipped globally is a huge factor, again, in the environment. It's all much bigger than one one thing. Exactly, Jasky. Not true evil. <laughs> Absolutely untrue. But another good excuse. No, yeah, the nuclear energy thing is a super it like it's it's terrifying. Nuclear energy is terrifying and I mean, I wouldn't just say bad propaganda from fossil fuel industry. I mean, so much media has a bad on even if it's unintentionally bad propaganda. I mean, the entire superhero world basically exists off nuclear radiation. <laughs> But in the grand scheme of things, Jesse, it's so much smaller than, at least from what I've been told and read, it's still like drastically smaller and easier to contain than CO2. And we ain't even started launching that shit to space yet. We got that whole big dumpster up there above us. That's all we really need is a CO2 vacuum into space. 
Did I just salt climb it? Hydroelectric power is the way to go. As a fisherman, fuck you. How am I supposed to get my boat down that river? Deadly for thousands and thousands of years. Space, yeah. I am here, I hear you. get a parachute on the boat no i'm not i'm talking about the damming up of ri the damming of rivers jehonal i don't i i have an electric motor the old launch it to the sun plan ah come on Space elevator. What happened to the space elevator? Weren't we working on that? Yeah, there's definitely areas for it. Dams fuck up fish migration population. Absolutely. Though they have gotten better with modern dams and, and canals and stuff to a degree, but still not great. Um, but there is, there's a lot of talk about how we could better utilize hydroelectricity without the, the need for such massive dams and flooding. I mean, we're all too young to realize the impacts of things like that, too. Like... I mean, have you seen what the like it, the area around the Hoover Dam looked like before the dam, or down in Georgia before they, you know, they, what's that movie they made about flooding that area in Georgia? I think it was Georgia. Yeah, uh, Deliverance. Oh, brother, where art thou? Yeah. Uh, but there's like a lake in Georgia that's like fucking 100,000 acres. It's massive. Biggest lake in Georgia. Eighteen square miles. However many acres. Three hundred and sixty seven wait, that's water volume. But it says it in acres. Surface area, twelve thousand acres. That was land, you know. Then they flooded it. Why'd they flood it? To build a dam. That's that's how dams work. Everything on the other everything on the the before the dam is flooded. Is flooded lands to make a lake and a dam to make electricity. We have so I mean, pretty much every lake that exists uh outside of the Midwest is a flooded dam in America. Or is a, is a flooded river, I mean, sorry. Caused, created by a dam. What's the name of the lake? That one's Alatoon, I think. But there's a bunch of them in Georgia. Alatoon is huge.
Lake Sinclair is huge. They've got a bunch of big ones in Georgia. Now, a lot of that wetland was wetland, but wetland is also, wetlands are still also important. Oh, like Sinclair is 15,000 acres. It's actually bigger by square footage. The other one's bigger by water volume. Lake Lanier. I think that's the one from the movie. Lake Lanier's surface area is 37,000 acres. These are all created by flooding rivers. Um, and flooding wetland, which wasn't very valuable land to us as a people without recognizing the value of wetland wetlands and when we did it. My fish have gone away. I don't know that it's even necessarily shitty choices made over cent. I get, I, I don't know. I don't know. That seems a little wrong to me, Jado. I think there, there will, there's always going to be a use for gasoline and oil, and it will always be a necessity. Um, I think the idea of ever eliminating them is crazy. Even if the, it's a necessity in just, you know, incredibly limited capacities, it's, it's still... Then at the time that we started using combustion engines, and so like Jassy said earlier about population, and I mean, we never... We didn't realize or know the grand... Maybe people did. Maybe, maybe Big Oil then did, did know the, the disastrous course they had set us on. I do think some of our, uh, a lot of our problems in the modern world are caused by how do we solve it without disrupting the lives of millions or more. It's, it's all fun and easy to say fix it, but you wouldn't feel that way if it was your life that was massively disrupted by that. And to do that without any global cooperation is even bigger issue. I mean, it's like kind of like Africa, right? Like Africa has been raped of everything by every every other country and left with nothing or any support for how to move on yet we still look at Africa like You know, they're causing their own problems, but literally every other country on this planet has gone into Africa and taken what they've wanted. And disrupted their lives. And not only taken, but leaving, le left behind so much disease and drugs and so many things left behind in Africa to create a whole new slew of problems.
Christianity. Yeah. We talk a lot about the Middle East and how, like, we've done so much to them to make them angry at us. But, like, Africa has so much reason to hate the fucking world. If you look at a list of things that have come out of Africa, it's insane how much we've gotten from that, that continent. And then you look at the state of the continent and you're, it's pretty hard not to be disgusted. Hey, lad. My bite rate has completely died, but it's been fun talking about our inevitable, inevitable, I don't know. I don't want to be like dramatic, but I do think that the, like almost the only solution is catastrophe because there's no, it's like the best, this comes not just from like reading angry magazines and articles and but like from my own like experiences in life you know addicts number one reason for recovery is catastrophe it's disaster in their life has given them a good reason to finally change and I I see people do it every single day of their life and I think like Without a catastrophe, it's going to be hard for the world to ever realize just how fucked things are and how much has to change. To have any kind of unification of the world, which is necessary. We're not a big planet. We, think, we used to think we are, but we aren't at all. What if the cast catastrophe is too big for change? I mean, it's possible for sure, Lunar, but I, d I don't think there's another way to do it, man. I mean, like, infrastructure problems and stuff in city. I think that, that, I don't know which one we'll see first, but that one's always interested me since I was, like, a teenager. And now after spending a lot of time traveling the country, like, infrastructure I issues in massive cities that millions of people rely on, re rely on, um... I mean, we're going to see some pretty... We already are seeing some pretty massive effects from that that are affecting the average Joe daily. It's not about being woke. It's literally about taking two seconds to think about how everything... One thing impacts the next. It's, it's not woke at all. I, like... I said the other day, I stopped buying a certain drink from the gas station and the lady had to like ask me about it because it impact it impacted the orders they made daily at their store like everything has this impact everything has this impact in life then if you don't you got to think about it Uh, when the Flint thing happened here, I'm a Michigander, when the Flint thing happened here with their water, uh, you know, the issue was ju was bigger than just one politician. The issue is what do we do with a city that can't afford to maintain itself and a government that doesn't believe in spending? Still happening, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it's not current news anymore, so nobody cares. But it had been happening, Gluttony. It had been happening. I mean, Flint is like a, a modern ghost town. Everyone who lived in Flint knew what was going on there. Like, maybe not the water was as bad as it was, but...
do you and like it's easy again people would say why don't they just relocate these people out of flint but these people don't want to leave i don't want to leave my hometown Because, but a lot of the times the, the solution to the problem is going to fuck over a ton of people and we just aren't willing to make those decisions. Oh, a, a pop-off, a rare pop-off. They can't afford to leave. Even if they could, they wouldn't want to, Gluttony. Why would they want to? That's the, their home. Most people don't want to leave their home. What are the stats on like people that move away and come back. It's very, very high. What in the fuck is in my, oh. How did that end up there? Something was stabbing me in the gooch. Like bad, like. Where is it? Oh. It's a two and a half ounce pyramid weight somehow fell down the leg of my pants and was under my gooch. I see a lot of people say, I'm so glad I moved, but like, that's just not that. This is what I mean about it. it's not being woke. It's about thinking outside of your uh, out of your your situation. It's about considering other people's situations. Seventy two percent of Americans still live in the town they grew up in. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not even questioning your decision, Jay Lang. I'm questioning how you don't, like, how that has anything to do with my statement, which is that forcing people to leave Flint, Michigan, because Flint, Michigan cannot afford to sustain itself, isn't an answer. And it's not just they don't want to leave even if they had money. It's that they don't want to leave. They want to live in Flint, but Flint can't afford Flint. So what's the solution? We don't have one. No, that's not the reason it can't sustain itself. That's not it at all. Well, I mean, I guess it's national politics. But by with that argument, every city in the country should have some influx of money. Because Flint doesn't... Why does Flint deserve it over every other city in the country? Flint's a, a once a large city for our state, not relative to you guys, but for our state that lost its biggest employer. So now it's just a big city with no money and no people with money. And it's too big to maintain just on sheer size. And you can't just shrink a city, right? 
My family's owned this house on the corner on the outskirts of town for 300 years and I'm not leaving and I don't want to leave and, and I understand that. I understand why they wouldn't want to, but the city supplies them power and water and all these utilities that they have to maintain that they can't afford to maintain because the city isn't as big as it used to be. What is the answer there? I think the real answer is explaining to people that we have to think be outside of our outside of our lives. Federal support. But why? That's what you're going to like I'm being the devil's advocate, but why? It's such a waste of human resources, and I don't just mean money, but human resources to maintain the size that Flint is. It's such a, it's such, it's such a waste. Because water is a basic human need. Yeah, sure. But this is the problem, right? would need to move people but then you fuck the guy that's the problem then you fuck the guy that doesn't want to move so either we drastically wait resources to keep people happy or we force them to move and upset them to make other people happy I don't, I, and sometimes there's just not a good answer. I was, I had this fight with my mom the other day. Cause like, I'm, I'm talking to a realtor later. I'm gonna list my house to sell. Someone just said, you know, where do you plan? I don't have a plan on where I move. It's just, I need to move. I need to get out from under this house payment. Um, th there isn't always a good answer, but we still have to be able to come up with an answer. And how do we, I mean, this is, this is real morality to me is how do we decide And just moving them is treating a symptom, not the problem. I mean, I think the Flint problem is... <sighs> like, there's a whole bunch of steps where you could take to say that Flint's problem is corporate greed and blah 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 But, like, there's also the argument, the other argument you can make that, like, there's just going to be times where we as a people move out of or move away from products and move away from things as we're trying to do with, you know, gasoline automobiles, as we're try we've done with cigarettes, as you know, like the there's just going to be a time and a place where big businesses leave and what's left behind is a city without support. So in order to fix that problem, what do you do? Like, I, I think there are. As much as, yeah, there are things, that with Flint's specific scenario, you can say GM fucked them. And GM did fuck them. Um, but, I mean, ghost towns have been a thing since, probably forever. Since the beginning of human civilization. Education? No, it doesn't. Gluttony? Bullshit. There's not enough jobs. That's ridiculous. There's just not enough jobs. It doesn't, it's, not, it's not, not enough jobs that can support a, a human being. Yeah, the educated ones leave. And why aren't there enough jobs? Because a business that employed tens of thousands of people left. How do you get new? Well, I, I mean, that that's <laughs> what what would a tr I'm, but that I mean, that, that that's just you're just saying the entire world's going to live in this giant corporate competition market that's un unfathomable, unrealistic. The, the the issue is Flint had a problem and there isn't a great solution. It's not I, I don't know. I don't think it's as simple as how do we make Flint more attractive?
unless you did as a government say, hey, Samsung, you're going to open a new factory, a new warehouse, and we have a city that desperately needs. So here's the benefits we're going to give you to moving to this city. But that's, again, beyond just one city and its problems. That's... The world isn't SimCity, yeah, exactly. You can't just put up a record shop and people start using it, right? I mean, because when, when a factory dies, not only are you losing those jobs, you're losing a whole, like someone said earlier, those that were educated, those that, that could find better work, um, did move, did pursue careers. But those that were just regular, average Joe workers, the blue-collar people of the world, stayed behind but they didn't support the local restaurants record shops and all the other collapses of businesses that go along with it it's it's uh it's a lot more complicated that's my point is it's a lot more complicated than just why didn't they fix flint's water the water should have still been fixed but the topic that also should have been discussed is what's wrong with Flint as a city and how do we fix that? How do we try to prevent that from happening? And I'm sure it's happened in tens of thousands of cities across the country. Yeah, and Arissa, and they're like, I mean, in my head, I'm like, that sounds like a great idea to try to put businesses where businesses are needed. But at the same time, I'm sure that would just become a disastrous political mess like everything else where it's manipulated and... You never said it was a great idea. In my mind, it makes sense. But I see how it would turn into a nightmare situation because people would abuse it, right? But that's, I mean, that's... I live in a town with the Welches that went out of business. And at one point, like 60 plus percent of our population, I don't remember the number. It was a lot. I was talking to the town council about it uh, at breakfast. There's was a lot of our town work there. Um, and yeah, it has dire consequences on the town. And we've spent decades now trying to convince them to reopen by offering them all kinds of tax breaks and built them a water tower and... That's never going to be the case, though, either, Malrock, with individual home ownership. You can't. Unless we eliminate individual home ownership, you can't regulate cost of living. Like I said, all problems are much bigger. There is not and probably will never be simple solutions to evil and even what feels like the simplest of tasks. Well, you can't regulate prices while also having individual home ownership lines. Right? I knew I know that it's not it's 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 never the individual that's the problem. I said that earlier when we were talking about cow farts. But it would also be an effect on the price of homes. Well, 
Why did GM leave in the first place? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't remember anymore, but I assume it has something to do with moving overseas. Some corporate greed thing. But is it also the right idea, Malrock, to continue to overpopulate these areas? And I mean, there are so many areas in the world. I, I actually, I think it is more effective, more efficient if we had the infrastructure to support it. If we all stacked on top of each other like sardines. but hard to say that it doesn't have a massive environmental impact on the area that you're continuing to destroy to build more and more homes. But the alternative is places like I live where everyone owns one and a half acres of well-maintained mowed lawns and it's probably worse in the long run than if we just had like a hundred mega cities and no small towns. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Except I would hate living like that, but. Arguably, if we could ever look at humanity, if we could take away p individuals wants, and replace it with needs and what's good for humanity. Yes. Just not single family lots. Even if that single family lot has been in the family for 150 years. But what if they don't want to sell lacquer? Tough titties. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm with you. I just think that the, there is still an argument for like... They fucked up living in a society. You do get into a really weird gray area there of like how much control that would make any homeowner feel that at any point that could happen to them across the entire country. Be forced to leave. I agree, Malrock, but when do we get there? I don't know, that's super short-sighted, Lacquer. All of those places, there's so many of those places that are, that are, Hicks, were Hicksville. If we got there, we wouldn't. Yeah, it's true. It's true. If we had figured, it's. I don't think we'll ever get there either. I think uh, catastrophe is the only answer to any unity, any idea. But I think that'll have its own entire set of horrible after effects as well. Like it's it's such a a mind fuckery to me to how how, how many people think it's such so, there's so many easy solutions for fixing problems when like there's 12 billion opinions. But there's places that like fucking Hurricane Katrina that shouldn't have been rebuilt.
multiplied times three mil 300 million. Perfect. Anyway, I got to run off to a, an appointment at the Secretary of State in a minute. So I'm going to go take a shower and get ready for that. Not catastrophe enough, Malrock. That's, and, and it, it goes back to the in human individual, right? I mean, I lived in bumfuck nowhere where risk of transmission was incredibly low. And I did went above and beyond to do my part for through COVID for however long. Um, because I wanted to do my part. But many didn't and never saw the effect of it and never had to deal with the consequences of it because that's how they live their life is based on consequences that affect them only. And for uh, many people, it was the opposite effect where those consequences of people like me doing what's best for everybody, they got negative consequences from people like me and from places being shut down and their job losing hours and things like that. <coughs> I don't know. World's weird. We're probably all fucked. Might as well play a fishing sim. Have a good day, chat. Uh, I'll try to come back for a bit tonight. But no promises. And, uh, yeah. I'm gonna go get my driver's license, finally. Again. <laughs>